What happens when you leave a bunch of veggie plants unattended and uncared for outside in the garden and left to the bugs? Let's find out. What's going on my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening house plants and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And yeah, I know, I neglected the sh out of my plants. Yes, I also know that I was not paying attention to these plants. And I certainly know that I was not worrying about them bugs. Yeah, I know, I kind of jacked up on that, but you know what, we're gonna learn from this and you're also gonna learn what they're gonna look like if you let your plants fend for themselves and it ain't pretty. I think this video turned out to be a what not to do video. Okay, so you still kind of learn something about it, all right? You know what not to do. Okay, so here's the deal. Now, I did a video on how to start working on like getting used to the crack key method, right? Which is another form of hydroponics. If you haven't checked that out, I'm gonna drop it up here down below but from that video I realized that you know what this crack key method actually has something to it so I wanted to see what else I can grow that's a lot larger and maybe you know see how it goes I wanted to know how this crack key method was gonna work for something larger like broccoli Brussels sprouts tomatoes and peppers right okay sounds really awesome so I set it all up right I got my buckets I got my containers and all that I encountered a few problems and I think that's where it all started where I just stopped caring about it and when you stop caring about plants, well, you will see what happens to those plants. Could this be a reflection of my own brain, of my own mind? Possibly, I guess we're gonna find out, right? So, these three right here are in cat litter boxes. I know, someone's gonna say, oh my God, that's not hygienic. Oh my God, it's not food quality. Listen, I'm gonna garden with whatever I have. And you know what? Some people just gotta garden however you gotta garden, okay? All of these buckets hold on to five gallons a piece. So I filled them all up with the, you know, the usual, the standard crack key method style. If you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna drop it up here. You can go check that out. All the instructions are on there. So, but I also mix this for five gallons. Okay, so you set your buckets up. Awesome, fantastic. You got your master blend, your water's all prepped and everything. What can go wrong now? Problem number one was if you are trying to stake up a plant that is really heavy or at least top heavy like this, is gonna have problems. That is what happened with all of my brassicas. You know, they're top heavy. You see right here, look at that. That is just leaning over. And with, see, that just completely fell over altogether. Now when it comes to my tomatoes, yeah, it did the same thing too. It actually fell over. But what saved it was the cattle panels that's behind it. I'm in my greenhouse, so I have lots of cattle panels on there. Just started growing up from there, and look at that. Now this top heavy veggies would actually work if you found a way to support it from the top. Now if you do that like I did with the, you know, with the tomato, it would actually work. If you're not stabilizing it, then you got a problem. Problem number two is actually in combination with problem number one, which was the top heaviness and they start to you know, fall over. This leads to this problem. This was a result of that big top heavy plant. Now it actually lifts up the neck cup off of the water. And that was a major problem I had. I mean, it just really would not stay up. Cause look at it, top heavy. That did not work out. So I would actually have to put this up somewhere or maybe even turn it all together. Oh, did you hear that snap? Oh boy. You see over here too? Oh, that's a problem. Another major problem is if you drill a hole way too big for your neck cup, it will actually fall inside. And that's exactly what the hell happened here. That was not good. But however, you know what? The plant kind of still survived. It still survived though. It's still going strong. So yeah, that's a problem. Which leads me to problem number three was the water. When you have them outside, they're covered by my greenhouse, right? So I'm not worried about no external rain. The problem was, if you do not have a lid cover like this, which actually fits into the bucket, see this actually fits into the bucket, you may have to come up with something makeshift, you know, so you can cover the top of it. Now this is where the foam, I bought a bunch of foam and you know what, it actually did work out. Not for a top heavy plant though, as you see, did not work. Because you know what, there was no way of keeping not only the neck cup inside of it because it's top heavy, but it would easily move around and it got the water green. Look at that algae. That shit is bad. 
Yeah, them roots look a hot mess, yo. Hot Once mess. Once the light hits the water, that's where the algae starts to develop. So I'm gonna get algae from this hole, being that it is exposed to the sunlight. Ooh, this one did not do good at all. You see, there's not many roots on this one. Problem number three, four, I don't even know where I'm at, is the bugs. If you leave your plants alone, man, will they get attacked. Look at that. They really got bit and chewed up. Now, mind you, these are brassicas, so I knew and expected those stupid little moths to be going around and biting and eating the shit out of my plants. Your plants are gonna get hit with a boatload of bugs if you neglect the crap out of them. And this is a perfect example of what can happen to your brassicas if you leave them alone. Look at that. That is a holy hot mess right there. Look at that. This is bad. These brassicas, man, really got hit hard, but they're still surviving because they are already in a large adult stage. If these were babies or if they were seedlings, they would not have survived such damage. You see here, so even if this one leaf did not survive, you have a bunch of other ones that are large enough you know, to compensate for that loss. Is this problem number four or five? I don't know, but let me tell you, I did not fertilize. Now, could I have fertilized this? Absolutely. Did I? Hell no, I did not. I know that if I gave them fertilizer, they would have done a lot better. But did I? Nope. Now let's say for example, this tomato right here. If we peer inside of this, whoa, this one has gotta be the freaking best. Look at that. No algae to be seen. White, white fruit porn. This is very, very low on water. So if I was not paying attention, or if I was not doing this damn video, I would not have noticed that this needs a refill of water. So what I have to do is actually fill this all over again to make sure that this has enough water in it, you know, to continue the hydro, because hello, this plant is actually doing really good. I don't want it to die. Now peppers, how would peppers work when it comes to crack heat? You know what, this actually worked out pretty good. It is top heavy, remember, so it's only gonna hold itself up, but for so long. Okay, so I have to come up with how am I gonna stake it, but let's look underneath this. That looks not bad. Those roots though, damn it, they look good. Wow, the water does look a little weirdo. I have something on the on top of that water. I don't know what that is, to be honest. I have no idea. If you know what this is, let me know down in the comments below. It looks almost like foam. Doesn't look very algae-like, but I don't know. But it, it looks really good though. Here we go again, trying it all over again. Now we just gotta clean out these buckets and I gotta empty all that water out first. Now I'm just putting in a little bit of bleach in a lot of these buckets because I want it to soak and kill the algae. Now we gotta put in a little bit of elbow grease and clean out these buckets. Of course we filled up the buckets with regular water again, but now I'm putting in all of my master blend. There goes the neck cups. I'm hoping that these Lekka balls will work out again this time, but we shall see. I have these rock wool that I bought off of Amazon. They already have a hole. I'm putting these little seedlings inside of this rock well. I know that I'm gonna have to cover the rock wool eventually with the Lekka balls, or what I'm gonna be using is the stone rocks. There goes a little Lekka balls, but I need to cover it. I mean, I'm covering it with rocks right now, as you see. See, a little bit of rocks? That's gonna be covering any of the excess light from getting to the water. This bucket right here is different from the rest because the other ones have the neck cups and those are four inch. However, this one is nowhere near a neck cup. Actually, this is not a neck cup at all. This is just one of my nursery grow pots that um, I turned into a neck cup. You know, it, it already had holes on the bottom. I just added some more so the roots can grow right through it. And also I just made a larger hole. If you've seen my tomato blight video, then you've seen this propagation piece of tomato that I did. Now I'm gonna be taking this tomato propagation, being that I've started it with all those roots, and I'm gonna try the crack heat method. Of course, I've already tried it before and it has worked. I'm just putting it right on the bottom. Now, instead of using Lekka balls, I chose to use river stones. We're, you know, river rocks, because I knew that this was gonna be very, very top heavy. Now, if I've learned from the mistake from the last time, I knew that a lot of these plants get top heavy, so I needed something to weigh it down or to keep it kind of straight. So that is why I got a bunch of river rocks, and I'm just gonna fill this up. They are called river rocks for a reason. I mean, they are found in water, so I don't see how this could possibly harm the plant. All right, look at this. See, I've noticed the rocks are already doing something. 
Now I can use more. See? Look at that. Bam! So I'm talking about. Also, the beautiful thing about it is that notice that there is no water visible because it's all covered by river rocks. I did not completely fill this all up because I plan on filling up this entire thing full of river rocks just to hold down the weight. Two weeks later, I still wound up just, you know, fixing up, changing around a lot of things. I did make a bunch of holes and that is what is going to be held on, you know, as a stake for whatever plants decide to grow really tall on this. So I'm not worried about that. Another new thing I've tried just to see if I can grow any vining plants out of this. Uh, that one's looking not bad so far. This one, this one had like three squash bugs that just came right out of this plant. So I don't know how hopeful I am for this one right here. This one seems to be doing just fine. This one has to be the best. Tomatoes are doing all right. A little one over there doing good. The tomatoes didn't really bounce back, but I have a feeling that is because I did not add any nutrients to the tomato. This one's doing good, it's just small. Uh, I don't know about this one. I still think it's kind of small. That one is doing pretty good. Uh, the algae thing again, I'm gonna have to work on that. And I swapped this one out for another pepper plant. So I guess we shall see what happens with this. I'm still working on being organized. I'm still working on paying attention and being mindful of all of my plant experiments that I have going on. But it's very hard for me. Hello, ADHD. So this is a work in progress, but I guarantee I'm hoping that in the winter time, I'm definitely gonna have this all hooked up the way it's supposed to look. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. Granted, a lot of this did not work, but that's because I screwed up and I purposefully kind of like let it go. At least you get to see what it looks like if you forget and neglect all of your plans. So this was still a learning experience. If you did enjoy this video and you want to show me some love, then don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, then consider subscribing. I drop a video every week and then some in between. A little notification for those diehards that really want to follow me and really want to get to know me on a little more of a personal basis. Then I am working on my Patreon and also my website. So stay tuned for all that awesome stuff. So until the next episode, you guys, where you and me both are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. I'll check y'all later. Peace and love.